All right, first of all, I'm going to start this out with a big thank you to you all for enjoying my top 10 best movies of 2015 list. But let's be honest, this is the list you really want to see. You love the top 10 worst list, you sadists. I get it though, everyone loves a good bloodbath. And I will say, making a top 10 list of any kind, best or worst, it's a very hard thing to do. I mean, not all the movies that deserve to be on the list make the list, because there are only 10 slots. Making this particular list of the top 10 worst movies of 2015 was the hardest top 10 worst list I have ever made in my life. There were at one point 24 candidates to be in the top 10 worst list. I mean, some of them weren't gonna make it, so when I whittled it down, I still had 15. 15 movies at all definitely deserved to be on this list, but only 10 made it. And as I said in my top 10 best movies of 2015 video, I did not see every movie that came out in 2015. But whereas in that video I said it in an apologetic tone, here I apologize for none of it. Sometimes you just gotta skip out on some garbage. But trust me, I saw enough shit in 2015 to make this video with proper confidence. So let's just get right into this list and talk about the top 10 worst movies of 2015 for me, otherwise known as the top 10 movies I hated more than Pixels. Number 10 that one awkward ass comedy called Vacation. Those sequel-ish soft reboot movies, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. This is one of the ones where it just didn't work. And a lot of people I knew were like, that movie's gonna suck balls. And I was one of the ones like, well, wait, we'll, we'll see. I should have just listened to everybody. Ed Helms plays the same character he plays in everything. He plays Andy Bernard from The Office again. Christina Applegate at least offered something to this movie. She's the reason this movie isn't higher on the list. Number nine. Number nine is Unfinished Business. Yeah, you remember that one comedy with Vince Vaughn, Dave Franco, and Tom Wilkins? Yeah, I, I get it. You don't remember. Neither does anyone else. This movie was a comedy that was just boring as shit. This is one of the more forgettable comedies of 2015. I will say that, at least there is that. At least it's like, well, if you forget the pain, did the pain really happen? The most important thing a comedy is supposed to do is make you laugh. This movie just bored me. Not good. Number eight. Number eight, another awkward ass this is really funny. I just realized the bottom three movies on my top 10 worst list are comedy. Hold on. After this, there are no more comedies. There are movies that are kind of funny. Didn't mean to be though. Yeah, Hot Pursuit. Oh my God. Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara had no chemistry in this movie whatsoever. At a point in this fucking mess, I looked at the person who left me. I knew the person, so it wasn't weird. And I was like, there is nothing this movie can do at this point. There's just nothing. Yeah, this movie was like a car crash in slow motion. You're like, I could look away. Oh, it's so sad. Number seven. Number seven on this list. Okay, you remember when I said my top 10 favorite movies of 2015 that James Bond got a facelift for a younger generation that was Kingsman The Secret Service? Yeah, and now Fatal Attraction's gotten a facelift for a younger generation and it was just god awful with The Boy Next Door. The one thing about this movie is Jennifer Lopez is attractive but it's just not enough to make a good movie. The acting was shit, the premise was executed like shit. I mean, a fatal attraction kind of scenario, that that's entertaining. Could be anyway, not this time. You deserve better than this, I deserve better than this, we all deserve better than this movie. Number six. Number six, sex and a murder mystery. Should be interesting, this movie made it fucking boring. That's the loft. And it's really funny about this. I compared this movie to Clue, I also compared The Hateful Eight to Clue. Nothing like The Hateful Eight. The shitty execution in this boring ass movie with the overacting, the underacting, all culminated for me to be like, I don't know what this year holds because it came out pretty early in the year, but there is a very good chance it's gonna be in my top 10 worst list. And it was. Number five. Number five is Pan. Holy God, how do you make Peter Pan boring? This is how. It's funny, I was in Disneyland when I saw, I was in the most magical place on earth, watching a movie that springboards off of the most magical place on earth, and none of it was magical. From the moment the pirates start singing Nirvana in the beginning, I was like, so this is off. It's like the writer of this movie saw a Knight's Tale when they were singing We Will Rock You, and he's like, I'm gonna do that but I'm gonna do it in a Peter Pan movie. It's gonna kill. Oh no, it just didn't work at all. This movie was boring. It was brown for half the movie in Neverland. And then it starts getting color, but it's kind of like a lifeless pale dead body that you paint makeup on. It's still a lifeless pale ass dead body. It just now has colors. That's what it feels like when you start seeing some of the vibrant colors of Neverland in this movie. The movie murdered Disney magic. I can't say enough bad things about that. Number four. 
Number four is ironically Fantastic Four. I feel like this is gonna be higher up on a lot of other top 10 worst lists for 2015. Rightfully so, go for it, kill it people. Just so happens there are three other movies this year I hated more than this one. This movie was bad when I first saw it. It just got worse when I thought about it. Oh my God, the Fantastic, this should be a fun movie at least. This movie took any of the fun that could have been in it, sapped it all out for this dark ass, brooding ass, boring ass movie. This movie is the epitome of what happens when a studio and a director have a shitty ass relationship. We all suffer and it's painful. It really makes you scratch your head as to why Fox is holding on to this property. It's like they don't make money on the property because no one saw this movie, so sell it to Marvel Studios so we can have the Fantastic Four and some Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Makes sense. They can ground out a little profit when they sell it to them. As it stands, we will not get another Fantastic Four anything for a very long time because of this movie. Number three. Funny thing, as this list started out with three comedies, it ends with three horror movies. Unintentional, I promise. But as for number three, we have Sinister 2. Alright, Sinister 1, when I saw it, was one of the more interesting horror movies that I had seen in a while at the time I saw it. But so I was kind of looking forward to Sinister 2, but not really putting all my chips in that basket because I know how sequelitis works. Turns out, it's a classic case of sequelitis. First movie made money, so you gotta pump out a shitty script for a sequel no matter what. Have the iconic elements from the first movie in the second movie, even if they don't make sense. Funny thing is this movie wasn't even sinister, it wasn't even really about the ghostly shit and the boogeyman. It was about this lady trying to escape her ex. Oh yeah, and the kid in the basement watches snuff films because the little ghost kids make him. Top that off and sprinkle it with some shitty child acting you have number three on my top 10 shittiest movies of 2015. Number two. We're down to number two. We are in the shit, folks. And the movies in this franchise have just gotten worse. Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. Paranormal Activity started out as a pretty neat thing, I thought. A little boring, but still an interesting thing. Because at least it had tension, you didn't see the ghost, so there was mystery involved. What to do now? Huh, well, let's put a camera in the movie that just shows the ghost to take away any mystery that this movie might have. So this movie is as bad as the worst paranormal activity movie that you can think of with none of the mystery that that movie that was bad had at all. Oh my God, what a snooze. The ghost didn't even look neat. It was just a blob. That's all it was, was a lifeless, formless, maskless, venom symbiote looking blob. Word is the ghost dimension is the last paranormal activity movie. I am crossing my fingers for that shit. All these movies are doing at this point is taking up one slot in my top 10 worst movies of the year list. Number one. Oh my God, we're here. Number one, the shittiest movie of 2015. The biggest horror movie that 2015 offered to us. It gave it to us early on in the year, and that is of course, Fifty Shades of Dog Shit. Oh my god, talk about sex being boring in the loft, at least it tried to be a mystery. This is everything shitty about Twilight, just repackaged and done again. Here's some perspective. Twilight was horrible. Fifty Shades of Grey, the book, started out as Twilight fan fiction. That's right. Fifty Shades of Grey started out as a shittier version of Twilight. The author wrote it on her Blackberry. And it shows! The characters were shitty. They were boring. You were literally sitting there with a gun to your head. I had to drudge through it because I'm like, I have to do a video on this. This is work. This was one of those scenarios where my YouTube channel becomes work. Once in a while, it happens. This was the time. But it's okay because we have some really interesting s and shit, right? At least that's going to be exciting. Uh-uh. No, I can't illustrate how boring this movie actually was, and that is why it's number one. It is the shittiest movie of 2015, thus saith me in my list. All right, folks, so that is it. Now you have seen my top 10 best movies of 2015, my top 10 worst movies of 2015. It was an interesting year. We had some good ones, and funny enough, when I was making the list, I was like, there have been a lot of shitty movies this year. Hopefully 2016 picks it up. I really hope. It looks like it can be a good year. So once again, for you, what are the top 10 shittiest movies of 2015? I really want to hear this one because I get a kick out of it just like you do. So whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. Again, thank you for another great, exciting and fun year on YouTube. I'm looking forward to 2016 with you all. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.